So I decided to try to catch up on Afghanistan. What a bad idea. And here's a little bit of the kind of surface scratching that you can only get on the internet. They, who? They call Afghanistan the graveyard of empires. So here's the deal. For the last 50,000 years, Afghanistan has been peopled by all sorts of peoples with names like the Hephthalites and the Sasanians and the Ghaznavids. Then Genghis Khan and the Mongols rolled through, which was a time period that seemed to suck radically, but they couldn't hold on. Then lots of kings killed other kings and brothers killed other brothers from other mothers until 1747 when the Durrani Empire was established which is considered the birth of modern Afghanistan. Then, starting in about 1838, the British Empire and the Russian Empire started using Afghanistan as a buffer state to protect their interests in the region. And let me say that if anyone ever asks you to be a buffer state, just walk away. It does not look like fun. Over the next 80 years or so, the Afghans play the Brits off the Russians, and we see not just one, not two, but three Anglo-Afghan wars where the Brits are never able to control the capital. This whole time period was called the Great Game, and it had none of the qualities of a great game. It took a long time, there was lots of fighting, and nobody won. By the 1920s, the British Empire was in decline and seemed as though it may just have been a global English as a second language class. And the Russians were more interested in revolutions, so they signed a treaty of friendship with Afghanistan. You know where this is heading. From the 1930s to the 1970s, Afghanistan enjoys a period of relative calm, and Kabul, the capital, is even referred to as the Paris of Central Asia. But things are not always as they seem in the graveyard of empires. In the 1960s, a communist Marxist party called the PDPA forms and becomes buddy-buddy friends with the Soviet Union. And in 1978, they grab power in what is called the Sour Revolution. This fledgling communist government has an agenda of modernization and social reform which irks traditional and conservative Muslims who band together to form the resistance fighters known as the Mujahideen which is fun to say, Mujahideen. Now the Soviets want to back up their buddies, so they sign a new treaty called the Treaty of Friendship, Cooperation, and Good Neighborliness, while the U.S. decides that a great way to piss off the Soviets is to fund the Mujahideen. This eventually leads to a full-blown Soviet occupation of Afghanistan, where the Soviets are now fighting the U.S.-backed Mujahideen and fundamentalist Muslims from other countries, like Osama bin Laden. By the late 1980s, the mighty Soviet army realized that it was in a quagmire, which is fun to say, quagmire, but sucks to be in, quagmire, so they withdrew. Drew. The Soviets had lost 15,000 men, the Afghans 1 million. The graveyard of empires is, after all, a graveyard. Once the Soviets left, the U.S. lost interest, and the Mujahideen were left to fight amongst themselves for control of the war-ravaged country. This eventually led to a whole bunch of provinces being controlled by warlords, which I like to think of as land pirates, and soon violence and corruption were everywhere. Meanwhile, a group of Afghans that had fled to Pakistan became inspired by the extreme fundamentalist version of Islam that was being taught in Pakistani madrasas, and they formed a group called the Taliban. So in 1994, with Pakistani backing, the Taliban marches into Afghanistan and starts taking back territory from the local warlords, stamping out corruption, and eventually, within a couple of years, consolidating a significant part of the country. But with that consolidation comes a heavy price, namely the Taliban institutes an extreme version of Sharia, or Islamic law, which brings back things like amputations and whippings and extreme subjugation of women. And that's around when the Taliban gave refuge to another fundamentalist organization called Al-Qaeda. What happens next is September 11th, but I'm over my time limit. But I also think that we're going to be talking a lot about Afghanistan in the upcoming months. And a little bit of background can't hurt. Till next time.